On the other side of the spectrum, we have complementary goods. Two goods are complementary if they tend to be consumed together. For example, sushi and wasabi are considered complementary by many consumers. Another example is stationary computers and monitors. For substitutes, you want good one or good two, while for complements, you want good one and good two. Two goods are perfect complements if you always consume them in pairs or in any other fixed proportion. For example, if you cannot touch a piece of sushi without adding a piece of wasabi, and you only consume wasabi with sushi, then these two goods are perfect complements. The most common example used in the literature is that of a left shoe and a right shoe. I want to avoid the boring left shoe, right shoe example for perfect complements, so let's instead look at an example from Factorio. In Factorio, you can produce transport belts, and you can produce two transport belts from one iron plate and one iron gear wheel. So my first good here is iron plate, and my second good is iron gear wheel. My purpose right now is to produce a lot of transport belts. So let's say that I have a bundle right here consisting of 10 iron plates and 10 iron gear wheels. One iron plate plus one iron gear wheel will produce two transport belts. So in this case, having 10 of each, this bundle will allow me to produce 20 transport belts. Now let's have a look at this bundle right here where I have 20 iron plates, but I still have only 10 iron gear wheels. How many transport belts can I produce? Well, the answer is the same, 20. I will then have used up all my iron gear wheels and I'm left with 10 iron plates, which I can do nothing with. Well, you can actually use iron plates in this game to produce other stuff, but for the sake of this example, let's say that I'm only interested in producing transport belts. So that would mean that I am indifferent between these two bundles. As you have probably realized, you will also be indifferent between any bundle on a straight line between these two points and the one we started with, simply because any such bundle will produce 20 transport belts and no more, and you're left with additional iron plates. So this line will be part of the indifference curve for my initial 10,10 10 bundle. The same argument goes if I go straight upwards for my starting bundle. If you consider this bundle containing 10 iron plates and 20 iron gear wheels, you will be able to produce 20 transport belts from this bundle, and then you're left with 10 iron gear wheels, which you can do nothing with. Again, assuming that you're only interested in producing transport belts. So you're also indifferent between all points on this vertical line. This L-shaped figure is then my indifference curve for my 10,10 10 bundle. The point here is that the only number I care about is the minimum value of x1 and x2. Here I have 20,10 and the only important number here is this 10. Here I have 10,20 and again I care about this 10. Since I need precisely one iron plate and one iron gear wheel to produce two transport belts. Now if we look at this bundle right here, 20,15, this bundle will be strictly preferred to any bundle on my indifference curve. The key number here is 50, and I will be able to produce 30 transport belts from this bundle, leaving me with an additional 5 iron gear wheels. So how about an indifference curve for this 20,15 bundle? Well, I can reduce my iron plates by 5 units, that will make no difference to me. So I will be indifferent between the 20,15 and the 15,15 15 bundle. And so by the same arguments, the indifference curve for my 20,15 bundle is this L-shaped curve with the corner at 15,15. 15. All indifference curves will be L-shaped like this, and as you can see, the corners will always be at points where I have the same amount of iron plates as iron gear wheels. That is, all the corner points will be on a straight line from the origin with a slope of 1. Let's make it orange so we don't confuse this straight line with an indifference curve. 
So in difference curves, we'll always be L-shaped like this if I have two goods that are perfect complements. However, it's not necessary for the corners of these L-shaped indifference curves to line up on a straight line with the slope of 1. That is, it's possible for this orange curve to have a different slope than 1. So let's look at another example from Factorio. You can produce electronic circuits in Factorio. And to produce one electronic circuit, you need one iron plate and three copper cables. So good one will be copper cable and good two will be iron plate. We need three of those, one of these to produce one electronic circuit. So if I have 30 copper cables and 10 iron plates, then I will be able to produce 10 electronic circuits. If I have more iron plates, but still 30 units of copper cables, that will not result in any more electronic circuits and bundles along this line are no better than the bundle I started with. The same goes if I have too many copper cables and this is my indifference curve for my bundle 30,10. Similarly, this bundle right here, 15,5 will give me five electronic circuits and here is another indifference curve. In this case, the corners of all the indifference curves must lie on this orange line, which now has a slope of one over three. All bundles on this orange line has this property that I have precisely three times as many copper cables as I have iron plates, which is a correct proportion for producing electronic circuits in Factorio. Let's look at the comparison between perfect complements and perfect substitutes. Let's look at the indifference curves for this 10,10 bundle for both of these extremes. If the goods are perfect substitutes, then the indifference curve is a straight line. In this example, I'm willing to trade them in a one-to-one -one ratio and the slope is equal to minus one. If the goods are perfect complements, the indifference curve is this L-shaped figure. In most cases, my goods will be somewhere in between perfect substitutes and perfect complements. So in most cases, my indifference curve will look something like this. If the goods are complements but not perfect complements, the indifference curve will be closer to the L-shaped curve, while if the goods are substitutes but not perfect substitutes, the indifference curve will be closer to the straight line. Let's do a quick review. Two goods are perfect complements if and only if every indifference curve is L-shaped and all corners line up on a straight line through the origin. If the goods are only consumed in pairs, such as a left shoe and a right shoe, then the slope of this straight line will be equal to 1. If for every unit consumed of good 1, I consume 2 units of good 2, then the slope is equal to 2, and so on. In most cases, our goods will be in between perfect substitutes with straight indifference curves and perfect complements with L-shaped indifference curves.